to start, ladies. So I have learned, I've been doing all this information, Brittany, that you are the only Duke Blue Devil to have a victory on the LPGA Tour. That's hard to believe. Duke has such an impressive resume. Do you carry that with pride? Yeah, I do. I, I can't believe that I am because there's so many good players that come out of Duke. Actually, Liz Jan Angelo is playing this week. But um, I don't know what it is. You know, I guess they kind of get tired of it and they go find different jobs and start families because that's what's happened. But yeah, I definitely do carry that with pride. Let's talk about this golf course for anybody who's played it definitely understands it. I played it six weeks ago at Media Day and then watching you all play it today, you played it a lot differently than I played it six weeks ago. So yeah, and you won uh, the U.S. Women's Open in 2011. Yes. So you know all about winning major championships. This is definitely a major championship venue. How does this course feel to you? Oh, this is absolutely, you know, like major quality of golf course and it's, you know, really great quality um, the golf tournament, you know. And when we just coming up to the golf course, it feels like, wow, this is major. It's going to be really fun. Then, you know, this golf course is really great golf course. It's so uh, exciting to play and it can be right out of situation. Then green's huge and really undulated. So i really happy to see my, uh, i I'm really happy to think about what shot I'm going to hit, you know, then, um, it's really uh, exciting to play tough golf course. <laughs> As a major champion, do you prepare differently now? Do you approach majors differently now? Is the uh, confidence greater now because of that win? You know, the major championship always set up the golf course really tough. So sometimes even bogey is not a bad score. So we really need to take, you know, bogey. If it's not double, still, you know, easy to just take it, take over that. Okay, I made a bogey, you know, maybe next time I made a birdie, you know, that kind of thing. Don't really, you know, regret what I did and just keep uh, looking forward and just keep fun. I think that's the main key to um, possible to play a major tournament. Karin, this is definitely a big hitter's golf course, and you are well known as being a big hitter out here. How do you like it? Does it suit your game? I think it does. The greens weren't that kind to me today, or I didn't putt very well. I'm not sure which one. Uh, but off the tee, it's definitely an advantage to hit it far. Uh, when the greens are this undulated, you need to get close to the pin. And if you have a wedge instead of a seven iron, it's a huge difference. You've been battling a little bit of injury. Yes. What, what's going on with you? I have a bad back. Uh, it started with some herniated discs, and now it's just bad. So I'm just trying to see how long I can play. and enjoy every every tournament I get a chance to tee it up in. You know, we talk about injuries in golf so much. You guys are constantly banging the club with the ground. So it is a contact sport because of that. Do you do anything? I mean, obviously you all are into fitness. I know you're very into fitness, but with your bad back, yeah. is there anything that you do with your swing, try to change it to help alleviate the pressure? Yeah, I've shortened it quite a bit, both in the backswing and the follow through. So I think I'm short and straight nowadays. I don't know. If I am, but that's how it feels. Long, short, and straight. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I've also, every morning I have to do a little exercise thing for the back and the core just to kind of get going and prepare myself for the day. I hate to admit, but I'm sure that I'm the person in this room who works out the least. <laughs> I think walking a golf course is working out. It's when did you first get into fitness? Um, I've always been into it. Ever since, ever since I was probably 12, 13, we play and practice and then I'd go right to the gym at the country club where I grew up and we'd all lift weights and work out. Um, I think it's just that my generation, we've always been into it. Do you do it during tournaments? You know, I used to in my younger days, I did. When I, was, when I first came out on tour when I was 19, 20, 21, I, I don't know how I did it. I would lift weights and run and I don't really do a whole lot. I do what she said, warm up. I get uh, stretched and just work on a little bit of core and stuff, but I save it for uh, at home. I do a lot of workout pretty hard at home and then take it easy on the road. Your younger years? My younger years. How old are you? Yeah, 29. Okay, all right. Just had to clarify that. <laughs> uh, Brittany, you've had a pretty successful um, showing lately. Uh, you obviously like the tournament in Canada, Manual Life. You won there in yes. 2012. Finished second last week. You feel good about where your game is and two under par today. Yeah, I feel great. Um, I've been working hard. I've been working on um, just a little bit of focus, seeing my shots and being focused. Um, I've also been working on confidence, just trying to hold myself with a little bit more confidence. And I did everything today, so I'm very happy with how I played and 
you know, finishing finishing like I did on Sunday um, with with those kind of shots and making the putts, it gives me a lot of confidence. Karen, I. I read something, and I don't think that this is really going to be good for your back because yeah. she likes to assemble IKEA furniture. I don't know how that's a hobby because that's like my worst She's nightmare. <laughs> how is the, is that really a hobby, or did you was I it just a fill in the blank? It was <laughs> probably a bit of each. I mean, being from Sweden and living in Oklahoma, it's hard to find furniture that looks the way I like things to look. So I drive down to Dallas and um, shop in, at IKEA and take it all back home and get a couple of weeks worth of entertainment, putting it together and making sure it all works. So young, I don't think, puts together IKEA furniture, but she is a very good violinist. Well, yeah, when I was young, actually I wanted to become a violinist. And now my younger sister is violinist and I'm still involved in music. And, you know, sometimes hobby is very, I mean, not sometimes, hobby is very important because, you know, sometimes you just can, you know, cannot think of anything without all. So we, we need a little gap, you know. I need, a, like, sometimes I need to uh, just get away from golf. Then when I'm playing violin, I don't really need to think about golf, and I can get refreshed. So, and then I can get, you know, very motivated to, okay, I really love golf. I want to practice a game that I can enjoy the golf. So I think having a great hobby is really great, and especially violins, you know, the tempo and rhythm is really important and is also really helpful to my swing as well. I heard Paula Kramer travels with her dog. Do you travel with your violin? Well, no, because, you know, like, my golf bag is already big enough that my violin case is also big, so I don't want to travel with two giants. <laughs> so if I'm going back home, I'm playing, playing violin. Switching back to golf, I've heard a lot of amateurs, especially men, we'll get into conversations, people who've been out here watching you all play, and it's everywhere I go. And the majority of them always tell me that they learn more from watching you all play in person than they do from watching the PGA Tour players. Why do you think that that's the case? We'll start with Brittany. Well, we hit it, you know, more like, a, you know, like my husband, for example. He's longer than me, but it's way more comparable than, like, the guys. They hit it, you know, 300. 30 yards, sorry, babe. But you know what I mean? <laughs> they, but you know what I mean? They hit, we're comparable. We hit it similar, like when a, a strong professional woman hits it and like a, you know, a guy that we play with at our club, we're normally about the same. They're maybe a little bit longer, but they can learn more, whereas when you watch like Phil and Tiger and Rory and all those, I mean, they hit it like 350 yards and you blink and you miss, you miss their swing. Your husband doesn't hit it like Rory? What's that? He doesn't hit it like Rory. He hits it pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think, Karen? I think what Brittany says, everything is true. Yeah. Um, but also, I think, you know, they, amateur men try to overswing, in my opinion, try to, or they try to hit it as hard as they possibly can every time. And if you watch the LPGA, I don't think that many of us do. There are a couple that probably grunts a bit hitting it, but most of us are kind of just smoothing it out there. And it still goes far, so I think it can show people that it's not all about being a big, strong guy. I mean, you can move the ball without looking like a, like a giant. Yeah, it was amazing for me watching So Young play a few holes today, and I thought, here's this sweet young woman, nice rhythmical swing, and then just boom it. I mean, do you think about tempo? How do you develop that? Has that always been part of your arsenal? Uh, yeah, I think the tempo is a very important thing, you know. The, like, you know, everybody is physically different, so everybody cannot swing perfectly well. But sometimes if, um, the temp we, if, if we lose the tempo, you know, we just, you know, ruin a lot of things. So when I'm playing pro-ams, last year amateur said, oh, I tried to change this swing like this, this. So I told them, you know what, when I try to change my swing, I literally take at least six months, you know. But you never practice, you're only working, you're just playing golf once in a week. You you have like really low chance to change your swing. So I suggest you uh, just, you know, think of your on tempo rather than change the swing. So I think tempo is really a big thing about the golf swing and golf game. So Yen, you played on the KLPGA huh? Tour, correct? And you won multiple times there. We have a great rookie class that came over from the KLPGA. We call them rookies on the LPGA Tour, but they don't play like rookies because they've won so much. Why is there so much talent over there, and, and how is it developing? What does Korea do so well, South Korea do so well to develop its players? 
Um, I think I get that question quite often. So to be honest, I don't know what's the reason. But uh, I think really good thing is we always having a role model. It's like when I grew up, like Grace Park, Sally Peck was my role model. Then um, when I was rookie, I played with GA Shane. Then after my rookie year, she moved to LPGA, and I saw her. You know, won a lot of LPGA tournament, and she motivated me a lot. So you know, she played with me at the KLPGA tour. And now she won, you know, quite a lot of time in the LPGA. Also, I might have a chance to play in the LPGA, and I really want to competing with all my role model. You know, that kind of thing. And this day, you know, MB Park used to number one quite a long time. So she inspired a lot to all the junior golfer. So I guess we are very fortunate to have a really good role model to become uh, LPGA golfers. I think role models are important for everybody, especially in this game. I grew up idolizing Nancy Lopez, and the first time I got to interview her was just extraordinarily cool. Who did you all grow up idolizing, or who was your role model growing up in golf? I grew up watching Annika and Kari all the time. At that time, you know, they won most every tournament, so I grew up watching them, and then, of course, Tiger. Grew up watching Tiger, so I've always looked at, at them looked at their games. I think in Sweden we didn't get much golf, nothing on TV or anything, but you always heard about Annika. So you knew it was possible for someone from kind of the North Pole to make it. Um, so I think Annika would be the one, but like I said, I didn't watch golf much growing up. I was more of a soccer person. Uh, my role model was Grace Park. I loved her swing, and you know she was kind of she was kind of long hitter, so I really loved her, you know, golf style. She was very aggressive, you know, like when she won the Navisco, she made a two on it there, then you know make a really great birdie and make a one. And I really loved her style. I always, you know, like kind of copy her style, like wearing a skirt and you know having a like hairpin. So Grace Park was my big idol. Grace Park beat me in the junior amateur. She was 12. Right. So yeah. that kind of brings back bad memories. So I'm glad you said that. And now um, Grace's mom. Actually, she got daughter right now. <laughs> no, it wasn't her mom who beat me. No, no, <laughs> she said Grace just, yeah. oh, I yeah. Before we wrap this up, there is so much enthusiasm, excitement on the LPGA Tour to watch the growth, to watch what Mike Wan and the staff has done to bring this event, the PGA of America, now being involved. Can you all feel it as players out there? And have you felt it the last few years, the elevation of the tour, more money, more fans, more TV time? What does that mean to each one of you? Yeah, you know, especially like a week like this, you know, a company like KPMG putting its faith in the LPGA and having a big event like this, it means a lot, you know. I know everybody is honored that we get to play Westchester and have KPMG sponsor us, but... Mike Wan's done a great job. We have, you know, we have so many great players from all over the world, which is great. We get people from everywhere. But um, this week especially was cool just having KPMG as a sponsor. And um, like you said, when you pull up, you can really feel like a U.S. Open. You feel like it's a, it's a great event. Um, I agree. I mean, Mike Wan and his staff, everyone's doing a great job. Um, and I think just the atmosphere amongst the players and caddies, everyone seemed to know that we're heading in the right direction. It's kind of more of a positive vibe amongst everyone. So I think, you know, when we go places like this, it's easy to get excited. But I think every tournament we add, we get excited and kind of see where it's, you know, about to head. I think it's only going to go up from here. Yeah, also, I have really, you know, feel really fortunate to have a really great all the LPGA uh, employees, and Mike Wan and Craig Ken. Then, actually, last year we had a, we, the first time we had an international crown, which is, you know, like country versus country. Then, when I was young, you know, I always grew up, watched the Solheim Cup, you know, and I was always jealous to, you know, see them because I never had a chance. But uh, last year I had a chance to represent my country. Uh, it was so exciting. It was really very new. Then when I heard, uh, you know, KPMG going to host a really, you know, weird tournament with the PGA of America, I was, like, I was so excited because, you know, we getting something, you know, have an experience of something new. So uh, I also uh, look forward to seeing something new again for the LPGA. And as women who play professional golf and may not always get all the same coverage or the amounts of money that the men do on the PGA Tour, to have KPMG support. KPMG, one of the four big accounting firms, they employ 45% women. So it's a company that definitely supports women and definitely supports the LPGA Tour for all the right reasons. So a 
big round of applause definitely deserve these for KPMG and for you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.